Well, when Rich Dad Poor Dad, I came out in 1997 and I said, your house is not an asset. And it drove people nuts. It just went crazy on me because that's a common belief. But when, when you can't make your house payments, you find out it's the biggest liability you've got in many of the times. It's turned out to be very much more correct than you even thought Right. when you look at what's right. happened to home prices. Right. And Donald and I love real estate. I love real estate. I think it's the best thing going, better than sliced bread. But if you're not smart with it, it's like a loaded gun. You know, you can protect yourself or you can kill yourself with it. So real estate is, to me, the best vehicle, but you've got to be smart with it because we're using debt. And debt is a two-edged sword out there. So you use debt, I use debt, but the more debt you use, actually you have to be smarter. So you can use debt to get richer, you can also use debt to wipe you out. So that's why you know, I continue on saying we need financial education. To just say to somebody, get out of debt, well that's not accurate. You use debt, don't you? Debt is a great thing, and to be big and to be very successful, debt is a very useful weapon. weapon. But you have to be very careful. That's correct. So the other thing with when people say live below your means, <laughs> you don't like to live below your means, do you? No. No. And I think when you say to somebody live below your means, you wipe their spirit out. It's like saying to somebody, if you want to lose weight, go on a starvation diet. It doesn't make you healthier to starve yourself. So I would rather get financially educated. That's why I read, read your books, because I want to, this is my greatest asset. I want to feed my brain so that I can expand my means without getting into excessive debt or where I start to lose. Because debt, I could say, is a two-edged sword. But telling somebody to live below your means is almost inhumane. I never felt good doing it. I wanted to strive to do better every day. I want to do better every day. I liked a good life. Like I tell the story of uh, taxiing underneath your jet. You know, I, th I was in my jet, but it was a little Lear jet. And I look up and there's a 727, and I taxi under it. I said, "Holy man!" <laughs> you know, it, it, it's it's big boys and their toys, but nonetheless, it inspired me. I said, okay, I'm in a Learjet now. It's time to step up. And it doesn't mean the jet will make me happier. What makes me happier is the wanting to get better, to get smarter, to do better. Well, I have a friend who was not successful at all, but was really up and coming. And he had a thing. He would only fly first class. I'm not saying do this because for somebody it right. won't work, but he needed that mentally. Right. He wanted to fly first class because mentally he wanted to think he was the best and that's it. And even though he didn't have much money at the time, this is years ago, he would always fly. I used to criticize him, but it put him in a good state of mind and he yes. became a very, very successful guy. Yes. Very, very successful. Yes. And I o I've always remembered that. He would never fly coach. Right. He would always fly first class even though he didn't have the means to fly. So. Look, it's complicated, but whatever it takes to train right. that. Whatever makes you feel better about yourself, stronger, more confident, to want to do better. And I think really that's the issue. I mean, we're at the stage of our lives right now. We, you know, To ask for more is not really it. But to do better, to feel better about ourselves is still important. It is very important. Right. So that's why I don't like saying live below your means and scrimp and all that because you know, shopping is fun. You know, nice, nice houses are fun. At the same time, you have to be very careful. Yes, but you have to be responsible about Correct. it. Correct. Like you know, when when you invited us up to your uh, your little con, your little duplex up here, whatever they call it, we walked up there, and I've never seen a two-story, two, entire floor home in New York City. And my wife Kim says, you know, says, I never thought, I never really want to live in a condo, but she says. Mr. Trump's house will do. <laughs> and it is spectacular. Do you know what I mean? And it's... I, and yet I, I, I don't need that, right? Yes, I, I don't. Know. I don't need that. If I had one nice bedroom with a good television set and a nice right. bed, and you don't really need that. But it was in a building I built, right. and it was there for the taking, so I figured I might as well do it. And right. what have I done? Instead of selling the equivalent of 12 or 13 units, I kept them. And by keeping them, I have them. Right. I didn't sell them, and that's okay, and it's become, you know, a very valuable place. So um, I didn't need that. I don't need it now, 
but there's something nice about it. Right, and then that's my message is achieve it, and then you can take it or leave it. But if you don't achieve it, then it's always something away from you. So again, that's why I'd be redundant about this, living below your means. I don't think that makes your spirit happy. Mm -hmm. It kills your spirit. Also, if you don't have the financial education, when somebody says your house is an asset or these mutual funds are good or the stock will go up, and you don't know the difference between a good investment and a bad investment, because real estate can be a bad investment, yeah, stocks can be a bad investment. If you don't know good investment advice from bad investment advice, then you're going to get taken. This world is not kind, should we say. The hardest thing that I've witnessed over the last year is seeing people that were very hardworking and very conservative that invested in the stocks. And right. I'm not talking about high-flying stocks. I'm talking about very solid companies. And their net worth is 50% of what it was a year ago. And they haven't done anything wrong. Right. Now, they put their money in stocks. So I guess you could say that's wrong. But it's really not wrong. No. Because historically, that's been OK. Right. So they went into conservative stocks. And a year later, they're worth 50%. And all they've done is worked. And that's the hardest thing I've seen. That's, that's tragedy. The thing that I want to say is this. You can invest in gold and lose money. You can invest in real estate and lose money. You can lose stocks and lose money. You can invest in oil and lose money. You can also make a lot of money in all those things. So really the reason we get together is because your financial intelligence, your financial IQ makes something valuable or not value. Like I said, you have to know a good investment from a bad investment, good advice from bad advice.